What's going on guys, Killer6 back with a full legendary item guide for all of the DLC 3 exclusive items. In this video, I'll cover how to get each item, break down how each of them work, and cover some of the other things that you should be on the lookout for with each weapon. So let's get right into it. To get any of these weapons, you will need the third DLC in Borderlands 3, the Bounty of Blood, a Fistful of Redemption. Each item has its own chapter in this video for quick and easy access. Just a friendly reminder, there were no new shields, class mods, or grenades in the legendary variety issued with this new DLC, so you won't find any of those there. I also do not cover any of the uniques from this DLC. I figure that kind of deserves its own video separate from this anyhow. So with that, let's dive right in. This one is the maxed out bright side. Now my prefix is maxed out. Your version may vary depending on the parts that you spawn with. This one does have times 18. I believe this thing goes up to times 20 for the modifier there. The damage is 2,428 times 18, accuracy 51%, handling 60%, reload time 2 seconds, fire rate 1.36 shots per second, which seems pretty slow, but it's not that bad actually. Max size of 8. The red text is, it's killing me, and the name in the red text obviously makes this a reference to Mr. Brightside by the Killers. Really cool song, very catchy. This one also features 90 3% weapon damage that is already factored into the damage up top. It does consume two ammo per shot and the anointment that I got on this one is on action skill and splash damage is increased by 200% for a short time. So let's see what this gun is capable of. Let's find some enemies over here and try and wreck some face. So uh, just the initial uh, shotgun damage itself is not horrible uh, as you can see here. It's not great that did take a lot of shots but what this thing excels at is its reload um, because it's a TDR, so obviously the special is going to involve uh, reload throwing. And as you can see, when you throw reload, this thing explodes and then splits into four basically like uh, tracking shotguns. Uh, you can also just direct hit enemies with it, as you can with a lot of TDRs, which is more than likely going to be your best option. And when this thing hits, uh, it explodes with all of the element. Well, not all of the elements. The only element you don't get out of this thing is shock. For some reason, it'll explode uh, into fire, corrosive, radiation, and cryo, but not shock. So keep that in mind. And each one of these shoots out those different elements as well, as you can see from that right there. So this is a very cool shotgun. The main downside, I would say, of this shotgun would be that you're going to use a lot of ammo when you throw a reload. So obviously that makes this more ideal in the hands of Moe's. And even with Moe's, as you can see, I'm already down to 29 remaining shots. So you can run out of ammo with this really fast, but it is a really cool gimmick on this gun as well. So take that for what it's worth. Uh, hey, look, here's one of the film canisters in case you're wondering where those are at. Here's where that's located, just in case that helps you with that. All right, so to get this gun, you're going to want to head to the Blast Plains, and you're going to go fight the Bronsons. Now, only one of the Bronsons can drop this as their dedicated drop, and that is Adelai Bronson. So we're going to head from, it doesn't matter which uh, travel station you come in at. If you don't have this middle one unlocked, I, I recommend going over there and unlocking it at some point. But you can start from this one and you're just going to head over to this area right here on the map. And this is where you can fight the Bronsons. If you get this uh, fast travel station, it is moderately close to as you can see. So let's head over there and I'll see you when we get there. Now, when you're going to fight the Bronsons, there are two places that you can make your save point start from. You could do this one over here by Vordukan. I don't recommend that one because then you got to walk across the bridge to this area. And walking across this bridge is deadly because there are dudes right here. And uh, lots of guys will spawn in. So what I actually recommend is go ahead and go across the bridge, skip past the Bronson's place, which is right there, and instead head over to this location over here. Uh, if I could not be frozen by these enemies, that would be nice. I really hate when enemies freeze your vehicle. It's really annoying. Uh, but there is a save station right here. And from this save station, you have a ammo machine. You have a vehicle spawn station. So this makes this a lot faster, again, when you're not getting frozen by enemies. <laughs> so from there, you would just start at that point and drive over to the Bronsons, which is going to be a much faster farm. And uh, let's go ahead and get that going. There's Adelaide right there, Adelaide Bronson. It's always going to be the bluish tinted dinosaur. So we kill Adelaide and we didn't get it on the first run. Now you can kill all the other Bronsons. They uh, register as badass enemies, so they can drop a variety of other DLC items, as you saw there. We got the spade from that one. And like I said, if you want to, you can kill all these other ones. In order to complete this challenge, you do need to kill all of them at least once. So keep that in mind. And we got another legendary from this guy. That is uh, the satisfaction and the proprietary license. So 
Uh, I mean, it might be worth it to kill all these guys just so you get all kinds of the other DLC drops as well. It's basically you're going to get four chances at legendaries by killing all four of the Bronsons. So uh, let's save and quit. Come back over here and see if we can get the drop. All right, on run number four, and as you see, sometimes Adelaide does not spawn at the front of the pack. So we will head over here and find him and kill him. And hopefully we get the drop. We got something. Yeah, there we go. Maxed out bright side. Uh, pretty much the same stats as the one that I've already got. Let's compare them real quick here while we're still in Iron Bear. Oh, uh, yeah, mine is actually a little higher damage, but that one did have a higher mag size. Uh, the weapon damage bonus down at the bottom is a little bit lower as well. That's uh, not a horrible farm at all. And like I said, if you want to kill all the other uh, Bronson members. Now, Bronson, in case you don't know, is a reference to Charles Bronson, famous for my favorite Western of all time, Once Upon a Time in the West. Really awesome scene early on in that movie where uh, he has a showdown at a train station. I'm not going to spoil it for you. Go watch it, man. It's a great, great Western. I highly enjoy it. So make sure you guys grab one of these, especially if you're rocking Moe's who can really get some serious damage out of TD or throw reloads. This time we're taking a look at the plumage. This is a legendary rocket launcher manufactured by Atlas. The stats on this are 20,757 damage times 8, 32% accuracy, 85% handling, reload time 3.6 seconds, fire rate of 0.83 shots per second, mag size of 6. The red text says, quit peacocking around. I'm actually not sure what that's in reference to. I do know that the plumage is another term for the, uh, the feathers on a peacock, so I, I don't really know, but we're going to take this over here and uh, shoot it and let you guys see what it does real quick. So we're going to hop out of Iron Bear and uh, this way we get infinite shots for five seconds. And we're just going to wail on these guys. And as you can see, it's okay damage. But for a rocket launcher, you, uh, you generally expect a little bit more. Now, with this being an Atlas, what you can do, however, is you can switch to a tracker grenade. And we'll stick that on him. And then we'll just shoot this over him. Nope. Okay, we're all oh, we're still on tracker. Okay. And then we got smart rockets. So as you see, even though uh, he like was right beside me, it came back and hit him. Uh, let's stick a tracker on the uh, buddy system. And now we'll switch to smart rockets. And as you see, it doesn't matter where you shoot. They're going to track that down. It actually blew it up already. Um, so what would I say this weapon is ideal for? Uh, probably just Moe's, honestly. Um, this is another one of those ones where um, the damage is okay. And especially if you can get one that has the same anointment that I got, the 300 over 90. Thankfully, they put this in the game. Uh, that anointment is still very, very good for sniper rifles and rocket launchers and basically only those two types of weapons. All right, now in order to get this gun, you're going to need to have the third DLC. Like I said earlier, there is a save station right here on this map. This is Blast Plains. You can fast travel to this station and drive around to this point, but then you're going to trigger the save station, which is right there. And from there, you can actually parkour up this hill and take a little bit of a shortcut. And there's actually a thing here, which is uh, one of the challenges, and then drop into this part of the map. And right here is the guy that can drop it. His name is Rendon Esk. And as you can see, this is where he is actually located on the map. So he's got a buddy system. Let's take that out. And of course, I uh, wasn't paying attention to my health because I tend not to do that when I'm making live videos. So let's blast his buddy system so we can kill him. And voila, there we go. Now let's take him out real quick. And with any luck, we'll get this on the first run, which means we almost certainly won't. And we definitely didn't. All right, so we'll uh, farm him again until we get this thing to drop. And I'll see you when we do. Now, in addition to the shortcut that I showed you right there, there is another shortcut you can take. You can actually jump up here, grab onto this, and then jump up the cliff and this way you're right here in his zone right off the bat as you can see so an even faster shortcut than the previous one that i showed you but i wanted to kind of give you the uh the actual route in there and as you see right here on our second run we actually got it to drop this one is uh an enhanced plumage so pretty uh quick and easy farm to get this thing this was actually the first legendary i got in this dlc the plumage was and uh again not really um not really a, a super powerful rocket launcher in my opinion but you know I, i've definitely had worse <laughs> i've definitely had worse rocket launchers in this game 
And of course, I'm just gonna like end up blowing myself up over here. Now on a uh, splash heavy Mose, this thing's not horrible. One thing that you need to note about this thing is if you're not using the trackers, you do need to aim it a little bit lower than you expect because the rockets tend to go a little bit high. So that's my guide to the plumage. It again is not the best of launchers, but on Mose with splash damage, it's not horrible either. This time we're taking a look at one of the new rocket launchers, the Satisfaction. Mine is the Nasty Satisfaction. Yours will vary depending on the parts that it spawns with, but at any rate, this gun is different. I'm gonna go with that. It is a rocket launcher. So as a rocket launcher, you expect a lot of damage. And on the card, this thing shows that it's going to do a lot of damage. 12,975 times 4, accuracy 58%, handling 41%, reload time 4.3 seconds. You get 0.67 shots per second, and the mag size is only 2. The red text says 30 minutes or less, and uh, I think that is in reference to the old Domino's uh, pizza uh, delivery commercials where it was like 30 minutes or it's free for delivery but I could be completely wrong on that. Let me know in the comments below if you know anything else that that could be in reference to. Uh, this one does have bonus 15% weapon fire rate, 605 splash damage radius, so you'd think this would be good on Moe's. 69% projectile speed. Uh, this one is anointed for Siren because after using Phase Slam, my weapon damage is increased by 300% for a short time. And that's what we're going to use real quick here to show this thing off. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys who drops this. So as you saw right he, down here on the hill, uh, I triggered a save point, which is located right here on the map, Blast Plains. So if you want to come over here, trigger the save point, and then you're going to head into this little valley where you're going to fight the Vorduken or Vorduken. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, but it's one of those two most likely. All right, so uh, Vorduken uh, will spawn off of this hill up here, and he has a chance to drop this gun. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and phase slam and then hit him with his own gun and get that 300% weapon damage, um, which as you can see is quite disappointing. Uh, I don't know if this gun did not properly get balanced or what the deal is, but this thing is a rocket launcher and with the phase slam 300 it's still not doing much uh let's try it on one of these smaller targets here we'll um shoot this little dude actually i think it killed him all right well verduken has now tell it changed into a smaller form and still can't really do anything to him man this thing is uh disappointing to say the least this thing is disappointing now that said i can kill myself with this thing real easily uh but killing enemies with it not so much not so much dude uh, we'll go and face slam him again, hit him with some more 300% damage, and can't even kill him with that, man. That's just, it's just sad. That's the best thing that I can say about it, it's just sad, sad damage. All right, let's see if he dropped it here on the first run. Of course not, that would be too easy. So we'll come back, farm him again until we get this thing to drop. I'll see you in just a moment. All right, on run number four, we finally got one to drop the potent satisfaction. As you can see, this one's times four. This thing can be times four or times five. I've never seen it be anything higher than four or five myself. Uh, that's not to say that it can't happen, but I've just not seen it. Uh, if it can go higher than that, maybe it'll actually be worth using at that point, but I have not found it to be worth using at all no matter what um that said maybe one of you guys have had better luck with it let me know in the comment section below but i can't find a way if if i'm using a 300 phase slam damage one and not killing enemies then you know something's not quite right about the weapon um so yeah let me know in the comment section below though what you guys think i do not recommend this gun at all i i just feel like it's it's just really high damage that just doesn't pay off. This time we're taking a look at the legendary Complex Root. This is a new one inside of Borderlands 3. The Complex Root can drop from various random sources in the DLC, but I'm going to show you the specific source that drops it pretty much on a regular basis, and that is going to be this person right here, Lanny Dixon. Now, from this point right here, there is a save station right here on the map where I'm at. And uh, normally what you have to do is you have to go around and go through this little canyon and end up here. Now, I will show you guys a really, really cool shortcut. I'm able to do this on Amara. I'm able to do this on Zane. Uh, I believe you can do it on Flak just because he's tall. But on Moe's, I haven't been able to do it. What you want to do is you want to jump up to that ledge. Now, you might think, okay, all I got to do is just parkour onto this little ledge right here and then get up there. But no, it doesn't work that way. So what you want to do is you want to get some speed boost going with Amara. 
jump up here. Now, you don't want to just jump onto this thing and then try to jump up there because you're not going to make it. What you have to do is you have to use this trick that's in the game where you mantle and push forward and jump at the same time. Now, I'll show you that again because it's kind of tricky. When you jump and um, mantle and push forward, you get a speed boost, which allows you to get higher than you normally would. So that's what gets you up onto the sledge. Now, if you don't want to, if you don't want to mess with that, like I said, you can just take the normal path around the way and get in there. It's not that much longer, so take that for what it's worth. Do uh, bear in mind there is a porta potty here, and I have gotten a lot of legendaries out of this porta potty, so keep that in mind. Now, to get this gun, Lanny is invisible. This is her right here. She's invisible. You can't normally see her. So uh, you have to kind of like look for her like silhouette or whatever. And uh, as you can see, that's what the complex route does. In case you didn't see that. I just I absolutely obliterated her. And uh, we got a 300 over 90. Now, a lot of people will be like, oh, too bad that got uh, that got nerfed into the ground. Well, not so fast. On a sniper rifle, that can be absolutely lethal. Now I'm completely out of room. I do have two face slam ones, so let me drop that one for a second. We're going to pick this up, and I'll show you what it's capable of. Wow, all kinds of people drop this stuff here. We also got a scourge and a bang around. I don't really want a bang ring. All right, let's go over here to this other area, and I'll show you what this gun is capable of. Now, do take note. If you're playing as Amara or Moe's, you can absolutely kill yourself with this gun. And check these porta potties dude. Look at this. We got a freaking Robin's Call. We, I get so many legendaries now out of porta potties in this DLC, so always be opening those up and taking a look. Uh, I'll show you guys real quick what I'm talking about. From this range right here. See how that just absolutely almost killed me? Yeah, basically it did kill me there. Um, I don't really understand the interaction that is happening that's causing me to kill myself with this thing. Uh, but I will tell you this. Here's what I normally do when I'm uh, doing this. Is I will shoot somebody and then I will get behind cover. Like, quick. <laughs> and that normally will keep me alive. I don't know what what's going on with it but it's like ricocheting hard and destroy me when it hits me dude it is uh it's brutal when this thing hits you it hurts all right so let's get behind cover as quick as we can Whew, we dodged that one all right so this gun is amazing i don't know if you saw what it does but when you shoot a surface see how it does like okay <laughs> i didn't even have to kill anybody that time to kill myself uh, what's happening, I guess, is that you're ricocheting a shot somehow and it's coming back and hitting you and it does crazy damage. So keep that in mind when you're shooting this gun. Always make sure you have some sort of cover that you can take. Again, if you're Amara or Moe's. On Zane, I have yet to kill myself with this. Again, I normally rock the barrier with Zane though, so keep that in mind. Um, and as you saw, we got it on the first run. So just like the Unkempt Herald uh, guy that I gave you guys a little bit ago, uh, this one, it drops really often. I'd say 30 to 50% of the time, probably closer to 50% of the time it's going to drop. All right, let's get into some of the stats on this gun. So here's the one we just now got, these uh, 300 over 90. Uh, this one is 10,957 damage, 95% accuracy, 76% handling, reload time of 4 seconds, fire rate 8.69 shots per second, mag size of 14. Now, this other one that I got is uh, really good because... This one is while phase grasp is active, and I love rocking the phase grasp build on my Amara. Uh, the weapon charge time is decreased by 71%, and on a Malawan sniper, that means that I can. Let's see if we can show it off here real quick. So phase grasp. Yeah, I'm not able to do it because there's nothing here for me to phase grasp. But yeah, as you can see, I hit myself again. Oh my goodness, this thing is brutal. <laughs> If you hit a surface with uh, Mara, you can end up killing yourself pretty good with this thing. All right, so the red text on this thing says, Your brain is a creative computer. This is a reference to the TV show Dexter's Laboratory. Not laboratory, laboratory. Dexter would be mad if we called it the other thing. Your brain is a creative computer. So what this gun does, in case you did not see it, let's see if we can find somewhere to hide behind after we shoot this thing. Let's, let's go here, and we'll shoot this wall. And I don't know if you saw that, but it basically shoots out in all these crazy patterns. And each one of those projectiles can hit and do more damage. And you can see it's trying to come back and hit me still, yeah. Uh, you'll see it hit the bridge right there. So this thing will ricochet around like crazy and do lots of damage. And uh, against large enemies, you are going to wreck their faces. I tell you what, let's go over to uh, Athena's. And we'll show you some of the cool stuff you can do with this gun. You kind of already saw it, but I want to show you some more because this thing is amazing. And uh, I, you know, I don't know if this is something that they would potentially nerf or not. Uh, it's not 
in my opinion, it's not really like game breaking because it's kind of like the lob and that you can kill yourself with it if you're not careful. Uh, you guys know how it is when you shoot the lob and then you run into your own projectiles. The lob does crazy good damage, but you can also wipe yourself out with it if you're not careful. So that's kind of how I feel about this gun too. If you're not being careful, you can absolutely kill yourself. Now again, on my Zane, I rock the barrier, so I don't have to really worry about that generally. But uh, yeah. All right, so let's get some dudes spawning in here. Start with you, sir. And uh, as you can see, that's probably gonna kill me. Nope, I managed to get out of the way. And uh, pretty much, pretty much one shot is all you need on most enemies. And you see the shots ricochet around there and, and just wipe things out. Um, even if you're really far away, by the way, even if you're really far away, sometimes these shots will just come right back at you. It doesn't really seem to matter how far away you are. Uh, I was hoping to see a guy up there on the, yeah, here we go. How about this guy? I'm going to shoot this guy and then I'm not going to take cover. And I just want to see if the shot will come back. Ooh, that was close. It went right by us. Did you see it? It was really fast, but it went right by us. That is wild. Uh, you can use this as well to take out the uh, the buddy system drones, but again, those it'll still ricochet at you if you're not careful. And as you can see right there. So overall, this gun is possibly one of the best sniper rifles in the game at the moment. Highly recommend going and getting this thing for yourself. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have gotten this, which anointment you're looking for, because I'll be honest, the consecutive hits is really good. Um, on Amara, you can go with, you know, the one that I showed you there where phase grasp is active. You get the 71% uh, increased uh, fire rate on Malawan, which is amazing. Um, yeah, you guys got to get this thing. It's so good. And this time we're taking a look at the double penetrating gratifying contained blast. That is a mouthful. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, this gun has one of the cooler skins in the game. It looks all broken and like it's got some molten lava pouring out or something. I don't know. It's really cool looking. Um, and this thing seems to roll with the double penetrating prefix quite a bit. Uh, this one is double penetrating gratifying. Your prefix will obviously vary depending on what parts yours rolls with. And uh, as you can see, the damage on this thing is 4,355, the accuracy 77%. Handling is 58%, reload time 2.8 seconds, fire rate 5.77 shots per second, mag size of 22. It consumes two ammo per shot, has 146 splash damage radius, it has plus 27% weapon damage. And uh, the one that I got here is obviously highly effective versus shields. Now, I'm going to uh, show you guys that uh, with Moe's, it doesn't matter doesn't matter if they're if this is a uh, shock one or a fire one or whatever we're just gonna tear people apart with it uh, I got bumped way up in the air by something there I'm not even sure what it was uh, but as you can see this thing is really good a really good assault rifle for Moe's uh, once again this one is not the best gun out there for the other vault hunters but it's a lot of fun on Moe's and uh, this DLC it almost feels like they were like you know what Moe's needs a little bit of love she's been unloved for far too long but if you guys are one of the other, if you main one of the other characters, fear not, there are other guns in this DLC that you're going to love. It just happens to be that this one is probably not it. <laughs> but you can have a lot of fun with this thing on other Vault Hunters as well. I used this thing on my Zane a little bit when I was playing through the DLC and liked it a lot. So it's definitely, definitely viable on the other Vault Hunters. Now the red text says, put a lid on it. Now I don't know for certain that this is what this is in reference to, but this is my best guess. I think this is in reference to Chernobyl. The reason why is because uh, during the Chernobyl event, they were supposed to uh, contain the thing by basically covering it up. It exploded and uh, you know, the rest as they say is history and not good kind of history. So if you haven't watched Chernobyl on HBO, holy crap, do yourselves a favor or give yourself a nightmare or whatever, however you want to describe it. It's a, it's a great show. And the, uh, the writer of um, that show is also the writer for the Borderlands movie that's gonna be coming out uh, hopefully in the next couple of years. So I'm pretty excited about that. So to get this gun, you're gonna head over to Ashfall Peaks and you're gonna start at the beginning of the map. You're gonna go around this way and you're gonna head right here to Abadoxis. Now, before you get there, dip into this little hallway because right about here, there is a save point. You're gonna wanna tag that, that way you can farm this thing much faster because otherwise you're gonna be starting way back here every time. But this is gonna be your first initial starting point to do this farm. And you're going to, normally you would just take this jump pad and you jump up there, but what we're gonna do first is we're gonna trigger this save point like I was telling you, it's right here on the map. So that way you know where you're going. Now from here, we're just gonna double back and dip into this little spot over here. Uh, minor shortcut if you want, you can jump over this thing. 
Hit the jump pad, hit the jump pad. I'm going to hop into Iron Bear and try and survive this the best I can. Abadoxus is just brutal with this attack, dude. And normally this thing will kill you pretty quick. If I survive with the mech, then I'll hop out and I'll just wail on him with his own gun that he drops and teach him a valuable lesson. And please tell me we got it on the first run again. We did. We got a shredded contained blast. Now this one is a times two variant. Uh, that is what you want to look for if you can get one. This is actually the first times two that I've gotten, believe it or not. So the one that I was using is 4,355 damage with no multiplier. This one is a times two multiplier. So obviously that's going to basically double your damage. Uh, it will consume three ammo per shot instead of the two ammo per shot for the one that I was using. Uh, the base damage is going to be a little bit higher just because it's the one that we just now found was non-elemental. Elemental damage uh, weapons are generally a little lower in the base damage than the non-elemental versions. This gun can roll with any element, by the way, in case you're wondering about that. And obviously it can roll with non-elemental. Mag size on this other one that we got is 16. So uh, now this one, after exiting Iron Bear, the next three mags will have 33% increased reload speed and 67% increased handling. Not really a great anointment on that. But again, uh, the damage on this thing is pretty exceptional. So let's go down here and shoot some stuff with it and see how this thing feels compared to the, uh, the shock version. I believe there was some enemies. I don't want to deal with flying enemies with this kind of gun, though. So we'll shoot this dude here. Yeah, this thing just destroys, dude. This is a very, very, very good weapon. Highly recommend this weapon. And again, you can make this do some good damage on any character. But it's this is just so good on Moe's that I, I don't know that I would uh, use it on any other Vault Hunter. This thing is just that good. This time we're taking a look at this new one called the NARP. Now, the, uh, the NARP is a legendary Hyperion sniper rifle, and I'm not a big fan of Hyperion sniper rifles in general, but I'm going to show you guys what this gun is capable of, and we'll get into that in just a moment. First off, the damage on this one is 8,563. I have seen this thing go up to almost 12,000. Accuracy on this one is 95%, handling 71%, reload time 3.6 seconds, fire rate 1.78 shots per second, mag size of 14. The red text on this says, what happened to your piece, Lily? That is a direct quote, and the name of this gun, the NARP, are both references to Hot Fuzz, which is a really hilarious movie from 2007. You should check it out. Not gonna get back up again. NARP? So what does this gun do? So as it says on the card right here, when reloading, remaining rounds grant bonuses to the next magazine. So if you have 23 rounds and now you have 22 rounds remaining and you reload your gun, then what's going to happen is you're going to be able to shoot this thing faster. Now, it doesn't always give you the same perks. So for example, let's shoot one shot, reload again and try it again. And actually, we did get the same perks this time. Let's reload at 12 and then shoot it. Still got the same effect. I tend to get different effects every single time. But of course, now that I'm showing you guys, it's going to do this every single time. So let's take this thing out here and test it out and show you guys what it's capable of. Uh, first off, let's grab this dude and see what we can do to these dudes. As you can see, pretty decent damage in the hands of Amara. Oh yeah, what's the anointment on mine? Mine is while sliding. So... Uh, you're not seeing any boost based on the uh, anointment at, at all. Uh, but as you can see, uh, in the hands of Amara, it's pretty good. But, uh, you know, pretty much everything in the hands of Amara is pretty good right now. So that's not really the uh, the best example. In the hands of Zane, I was uh, not enjoying this gun nearly as much. I would definitely say this one is more for Amara than any of the other Vault Hunters. Uh, but, you know, you try it out and see what you think. And as you can see right here, we got a reload that is slower. When you get that fast fire rate version, you get higher damage as well. So let's grab these guys, reload, and see if we get that again. No, nah, not quite, but it's a little bit faster than the last time, which means it's a little bit higher damage than last time. Let's grab him again. There we go. We got the higher fire rate, and as you can see, that's better damage each time that we shoot as well. So all in all, this thing is okay. Uh, it's not really a sniper rifle that I would take over, say, like an Unseen Threat, a Skull Masher, or even the new sniper rifle, the Complex Root. On Amara, it's gonna, you're going to be hard-pressed to find a better sniper rifle than the Complex Root. 
So to get this gun, however, what you need to do is you need to come to this map it's called Ashfall Peaks. You're going to go to the central most fast travel station. You're going to move forward and go right here to where I'm going. And there is a jump pad right here that's going to take you up to this platform. And we're going to fight Hat on Mar. So let's get in here and kill old Hat on Mar. Of course, there's a buddy system floating around, ruining everything. Uh, so let's grab these guys. And Hat on Mar is dead. And we did not get it on the first run, so let's run it a couple more times until we get the drop. I will see you when we get it. Now, bear in mind, there is also a chest hidden in this room. You just bust through this thing, and it's back here in this corner. I have gotten some legendaries out of it before, but not this time. Uh, and some of the other dudes in the room will also drop you some stuff on occasion, so be on the lookout for that as well. And finally, we got one. Holy cow, that took eight runs. This was like the hardest of all the legendaries that i've had to get from this dlc so far so as you can see there we got a hostile synergized narp uh this one's wild airborne so not great on the anointments uh you can kind of see that there's a difference right here between the barrels as a matter of fact that's pretty interesting i don't know um what that difference will result in let's see uh stat wise i uh, got more damage i have better handling better reload smaller mag uh, it doesn't appear that it does anything else too different there, despite the fact that it's got a very different barrel than the other one that we had. So let's kill this dude with it. As you can see, the damage is, um, you know, it's, it's lacking a little bit <laughs> compared to other snipers, especially compared to like the complex route. But if you, um, if you, you know, reload and get the mag, where it's going to give you the faster fire rate. It's also going to give you higher damage. So if you don't get that, just uh, reload again until you do get it. Because that's the only way that this gun is actually worth using, in my opinion. So that's my guide to the NARP. It's a cool Hot Fuzz reference. One of my favorite movies. And uh, yeah, other than that, it's not really a weapon that I would say that you absolutely have to have. Probably best served on Amara. Maybe even Moe's because of mag size. Uh increases so you'd be able to you know reload until you get the one that you want and then just basically keep that going uh with the bottomless mags mos but all in all decent weapon not a great weapon i don't know let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below uh, i do recommend getting a, a good roll on this one a good anointment on this one to get the maximum damage out of it but as it stands i just don't think that it's really worth uh using in place of like a complex route for example uh it you know like i said it's still pretty decent but not a be all end all kind of sniper rifle this time we're taking a look at the new legendary from dlc3 called the robin's call the version i got is called roundup robin's call this can spawn with a variety of prefixes so keep that in mind the annoyment that i got on mine is action skill and next two mags will have 100 percent additional bonus radiation damage which is extremely good on flak uh i got one that rolled with a times 12 variant you can get this thing in as low as a times nine, I believe is the lowest it can go. The mag size on this is 12. Uh, base damage, 2,257 times 12. Accuracy, 55%. Handling, 69%. Reload time, 2.3 seconds. And fire rate is 5.66 shots per second. The red text says, are you not he? This is a reference to a Midsummer Night stream by Shakespeare. And the quote, are you not he that frights the maidens of the villagery? I don't know much about Midsummer Night's Dream, but I do know that that's what that is in reference to. Now, this gun is really, really good on Flak, and I'm going to show you why. So, basically, Flak, if you uh, are specced out the same way as me, every shot you do is going to be a crit. And with this gun, it's like the other call weapons, if you're familiar with them, in that it regens your ammo. It, back, it basically puts ammo back in your gun when you hit crits. Now, with Flak... Uh, especially with this times 12 variant, that is 12 chances to get the ammo back on each shot, which basically means you never are ever going to run out of ammo on this gun. Now, the base damage for the gun lacks a little bit, but this is a awesome substitute for all those people who've been trying to find one of those freaking uh, Jacob shotguns for flak so that you have like the times 25. This one will do just fine in replacement for that. Now, this gun can be obtained from Garrett and Loke, or Garrett and Locke, if you will, on the map Ashfall Peaks. If you start from the center most save point, you're going to basically backtrack and go through this little pathway. But there is a save station right here on your map 
Um, so if you head to this spot right here, which I'm going to show you, then you can trigger a save point and make this a much faster farm. So like I was saying, this gun is basically a, a stagecoach that you can actually go farm for. I know a lot of people out there are uh, definitely in the market for a good stagecoach on their flag. Now, this thing cannot roll times 25, but still it can be a very, very powerful piece of gear. Um, as you can see, you're capable of doing crazy good damage with flak. I would say that this shotgun is probably not that great in the hands of any of the other Vault Hunters. This is basically a flak special, if you ask me. And the reason for that is, uh, again, like I said earlier, flak hits these crits like crazy, and you get your ammo back. And, I mean, honestly, if you are hitting headshots all the time with the other Vault Hunters, you're going to get your ammo back too. But flak is able to hit body shots and get... Uh, ammo back so makes it much better in their hands than in the hands of other vault hunters in my opinion so uh this guy right here is the dude that can drop it a garrett and loke or garrett and lock i'm again not sure how to say it and he drops it fairly often just like everybody else in this dlc seems to drop their loot very often as you can see right there there are going to be a lot of dudes here that you have to deal with when you go to farm this thing you can just skip by them and garrett and lock will always spawn out of this door right here so if you want to, you can ignore them, run over to that spot, kill him, see if he gets the uh, the drop, and then just move on with your life. There are usually going to be a lot of badasses here too, though. So if you're in the market for farming just random legendaries, these guys will drop them fairly often as well. So the Robin's Call is apparently named after, probably after, I'm not entirely sure on this, but probably named after one of the dev's kids. Uh, because the Lucian's Call and the Rowan's Call were both names of kids from uh borderlands developers so a uh, funny little side note there for you and that uh robin is probably the name of a developer's child so pretty cool little touch it's nice that they get to put things like that in the game to uh to basically honor their kids who uh put up with them having to work from home right now during this crazy time in our lives so overall would i recommend this gun on everybody heck no not at all <laughs> it's definitely more of a uh, flak weapon than anything else and uh, I don't think that I would bother using this on literally any other Vault Hunter, to be honest with you guys. And this one is yet another DLC 3 exclusive, the Stone Thrower. Now, mine is the Dueling Stone Thrower. Yours will be different based on the prefix that you get, but it should be a variation of the Stone Thrower. Uh, this is a very cool looking gun, man. Like, this is an assault rifle that kind of looks like a sniper rifle with a big suppressor at the end. Uh, this is a nice Jacobs AR. Uh, as you can see, the stats on this one are 7,440 damage, accuracy is 66%, handling 60%, reload time 2.8 seconds, fire rate 4.44 shots per second, max size of 20, and the red text says everywhere is nearby. Uh, that plus the name stone thrower means uh, basically here in America we have an expression that something is a stone's throw away, just meaning that it's close by. And uh, that's what I kind of feel this is in reference to now what this gun does is on body shots as well as on criticals you will ricochet your shots normally on a jacobs uh, weapon you have to hit criticals to get ricocheted shots but on this gun it'll ricochet whether it's body shots head shots whatever and as you can see we're uh we're hitting this guy over here to the right as you can see by the immune stats on him um so you know that it was already working so let's hit this guy in some body shots some head shots and you can see the damage itself is not horrible. Uh, let's take out this buddy system. This this always messes up my uh, my guides, man. Always having to deal with a buddy system at the worst possible time. I am not a fan of the Mayhem 2.0 modifiers. I don't know if I mentioned that before or not, but I just don't like them. So as you can see, when you hit the shots with this thing, whether you're accurate and hit those crits, or if you're like me and you hit body shots all the time, you will ricochet your shots all over the place and uh, damage other nearby enemies, which makes this a really good weapon for mobbing. It's not really something you're gonna use for bossing though. As you can see, we're hitting this guy even though he was off to the side over here. Let's face grasp you, take out this buddy system. And the buddy system was actually allowing me to ricochet over to that guy. And as you can see, uh, I hit for 4 million on the guy. 3 million, 4 million, oh my god. <laughs> now that's partially due to uh, Mara's Ties the Bind, Phase Grasp, and Indiscriminate being so powerful. Uh, <laughs> so that's why that's such high damage. But this kind of illustrates the point that I was going to make. In the hands of other Vault Hunters, I don't know that I would use this gun in place 
of a variety of other options but in the hands of Amara, it can be a lot of fun. So to farm this gun, you're gonna need to head all the way to the end of the Ashfall Peaks map. You can spawn here at this fast travel station and then run your way through like what we did. And you're gonna head through this like bathhouse looking area there. Actually, there's an even closer save station now that I think about it, right here. So once you save and quit, you're gonna spawn there by those vending machines every single time. You're gonna go down this ramp and it's Carmash. Carmash, the ultra not super duper invincible. We're gonna go up here and kill him. And as you can see, did a little bit of damage to Carmash, but not as much as I would have liked. So again, this gun is not really a boss kind of gun, <laughs> but uh, you can also roll this with a, uh, a Gatling style uh, prefix so that you don't have to squeeze the trigger every time as well. I've gotten a few of those, so keep an eye out for those. I've never had this fight go this long before. That's how that's how weak this gun is for boss fights, in case you're wondering. Uh, let's go ahead and take him out. I'm tired of dealing with him. Go ahead and hit him with some complex root and see if he gives us the drop here. Of course, we're going to kill ourselves with the complex root as well. If you haven't watched my guide on the complex root, you should check it out because uh, it's a pretty interesting gun. Uh, so we got a loaded lead sprinkler. That is not what we want. <laughs> And an expert storm and a Nimbus. Nope, so he did not drop us what we're after. He dropped us the lead sprinkler instead. So let's kill him again until we get this drop. So I'll see you once we get it. Got a gargoyle, we got a beacon, and we got the dueling stone thrower. Now this one has on face slam, you get melee damage increased by 200% for a short time. As you see, the damage is considerably higher than the one that I was using though. So this thing can vary in damage quite a bit. And this one also is a uh, pull the trigger uh, single shot mode. But you can, like I said, you can get this thing to roll in a uh, full auto version as well. This time we're taking a look at another DLC 3 item, the spade. Now mine is a double penetrating gratifying spade. Your prefix will vary depending on the parts that the gun rolls with. And what you want to look for on this thing is the one that I'm rocking right here, the times 10 multiplier. And this one also features a five mag size. So this thing is an absolute beast. I've seen this thing roll with a times four, a times five, a times eight, and a times 10. And uh, all of them feature around the same mag size. It can go down to three mag and as high as five that I've seen. I don't know that it'll go any higher. Now the uh, anointment that I got on this thing is absolutely terrible. It's on action skill and create a cyber spike that damages enemies nearby. Just an absolute horrible, horrible anointment, but it doesn't matter. You're going to see how powerful this thing is here in just a second. So the damage on this one is 2015 times 10, accuracy 73%, handling 62%, reload time 3.0 seconds, fire rate 9.70 shots per second, and the mag size again of 5. The red text says, Lucille, God gave me a gift, and that is a direct quote from Mystery Men, a really hilarious movie about a band of, like, really just oddball superheroes. And uh, this is a reference to one of those heroes who was named the Shoveler. And uh, his superpower was that he could shovel really well. <laughs> that was his power. All right, additional stats on this one. Negative uh, 34% weapon damage, negative 26% weapon accuracy, 15% weapon fire rate. What this thing says that it does is gyro jets penetrate targets, leaving sticky bombs on all enemies that they pass through. So, in other words, if you line up a bunch of dudes and shoot through them, all of them will get sticky bombs applied to them, which is nuts especially for like areas where you know you have a lot of mobs so let's show you real quick before we start killing stuff with this let's show you how to go get this thing so on obsidian forest if you start from the uh the central save point which is at crone's contentment you're going to follow this path and you're going to head back this way to get to wayland herd so I'm going to go that way and I will see you guys once we get there all right now once you get to this point of the map right here this is where you're going to find your save point to do this farm because as you can see from here we just got to go around to this point right here it's a really quick and easy farm uh now i say quick and easy but now that i think about it it's not the quickest or easiest farm out there i farmed this guy for about an hour and a half the other day and i think i ended up getting a total of about five of these guns to drop um, as you can see, there is a little shortcut that we took there. I jumped up on top of that box and ran across the cliff. Wayland Herd almost always spawns back here at the back part of this area. So uh, make sure you come over here and uh, look for him. This is the, the main problem with this farm. There are so many enemies that are going to spawn here that it is going to be really tough 
to farm him and just get out without having to like fight all these other dudes so we're gonna kill him real quick here let's see if we get the drop on the first run which would be kind of miraculous in itself he is not one to die yep we did not get it so i will see you guys here in a moment when we do get the drop did we finally get it oh my god this is run number eight by the way <laughs> run number eight and we got one. Oh, and it's a double penetrating one wow all right now the mag size on this one is lower it's a three mag versus the five mag that i got the damage is higher by about 441 i think and uh yeah so there you go you can see that he does drop it it's just uh really annoying to get it to drop sometimes so let's go ahead and show you guys what this gun is capable of this is what it does uh it just destroys everything in sight and if you can get enemies to line up which i know is a very uh very specific situation but well, you can apply stickies to both of them i don't know how well you saw that but we did it um that guy's got stickies you can see the stickies just go everywhere dude they are everywhere right now <laughs> there are stickies everywhere and when i reload they should all blow up and it's like it's like the scene in uh apocalypse now gotta love the spell of napalm in the morning because we just freaking destroyed the countryside right there holy crap so um what would i say this gun is best on it's definitely really good on mo's it's really really good on flak a uh, crit flak build um you're gonna have a lot of fun with it um i mean you can use it on amara and zane but i would say that uh this is definitely more geared toward mo's and flak this is almost this is like having a really good kiabasa on flak i don't know if you guys remember the kiabasa shotgun but you can churn out insane damage and look at that holy crap it's still going oh my gosh so yeah the spade is a really good gun definitely recommend getting it and this time we're taking a look at the frequency now mine is the binary compressing frequency your prefix may change depending on the parts that your version spawns with this one has 2059 damage times 24 which is a, the max that it can go accuracy of 57 percent handling 60 percent reload time 2.6 seconds fire rate 6.3 shots per second mag size of 12 the red tech says hurts so good and uh that's just in reference to the fact that this thing's the frequency and hurts and it's a it's a sound joke haha -ha. the other stats on this are negative 24 percent weapon damage it's already factored into the damage up top so don't feel like it's going to steal damage from you for with that uh it does have plus 20 percent weapon charge speed it does consume two ammo per shot uh, something you need to know about this gun is that it will seem like it's not doing that much But what you got to do with this gun is you got to get that first kill once you get the first kill What's gonna happen with this gun is? Subsequently after we get it one kill there it took a little bit longer now each of my shots are going to shoot out two projectiles so as you see there one two one two and Then because I didn't get another kill quick enough it dropped back down to one shot so the most that I've seen this thing go up to is four shots, um, but good luck <laughs> on Mayhem 10. This gun is going to be, uh, you're going to have a hard time getting uh, to four shots out of this thing. Now, if you kill a buddy system, I do believe that counts toward your stacks of shots on this thing. Uh, let's get this guy killed real quick. Uh, well, shoot, I was a little slow on my rack attack there. Oh, look at my pet being a bro. All right, let's just I'll tell you what, let's head over in here to Tron. And see what kind of damage you can do on him and as you can see this thing kind of lacks for damage a little bit let's see if we can get a kill all right got a kill with that guy all right now we can get a double shot out of this thing <laughs> so you can kind of see where this where this guy is going this gun is not optimal for mayhem 10. uh in the lower mayhem levels this gun might be a lot of fun but at mayhem 10 it's frustrating <laughs> to say the least dude it is not super fun at mayhem 10. oh man my pet came through didn't think he was gonna get me there for a second all right we'll hit him hit him with some piss and yeah you can you can see <laughs> it's just it's just lacking severely because like look we can switch to a light show and we're gonna do more damage with the light show than we do with that uh we can swap to uh a corrosive reflux and probably get more dps out of it than what we did out of that other gun so on mayhem 10 is just super duper not ideal in my opinion but again if you're doing it on lower mayhem levels sure why not go for it so let's show you where to go to farm this thing you want to go to gehenna and you're going to head over to the map obsidian forest 
from here you're going to start at the central most save station and then you're going to need to go on a little bit of an adventure to find the place where this is dropped so when you spawn in at this fast travel station you need to head up this ramp you can go ahead and grab ammo while you're here and then from there it's just a matter of following this pathway all the way back to the point where you have Electricor. he's right here on your map now when you're heading over that way first duck into this little hallway over here and because that's going to trigger a save point and then you can shortcut over to that so i will see you when we get to the shortcut and we'll take over from there all right so here we are at the save station that i was telling you guys about it is again located right here on your map from here we're just going to follow the pathway down across and into this cave system over here so let's head on over there and see if we get lucky on the first run i'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb and say probably not but who knows some of these drops in this dlc are very frequent man like uh some of these enemies they they drop on a regular basis but others are very stingy for whatever reason so let's see how we do with electricor who is weak to fire like most of the things in this DLC, actually, a lot of things in this DLC are weak to fire. And no luck on the first run. He dropped a Warlord. So we will save and quit and try again. And we got it on run number three. We got the Hazardous Frequency. This one does have fire damage on it. So let's uh, throw that one on. Try this thing out versus some fleshy targets. Oh, well, it helps if I switch it to fire damage. And as you can see, it's still lackluster at best until you get that first kill and even after you get that first kill it's still on mayhem 10 it's just still not that good in my opinion all right let's get that kill i don't know if that'll count no it doesn't count if you if you stab him and kill him it doesn't count toward the uh the stack so that's good for you guys to know as well so uh overall i would give the frequency about a four out of ten uh on lower mayhem levels not bad i mean it'd probably be good on mayhem 5 but with the scaling being the way it is uh, which is actually a lot better than it was, but this gun, uh, this gun definitely needs a little bit more in the way of damage, in my opinion. And this one is the proprietary license. Now you can only get this by having the third DLC called Bounty of Blood, A Fistful of Redemption. It was released on June 25th. And my version is the hostile popular proprietary license. Yours may change based on the prefix there. Uh, but it will be a variation of the proprietary license. Now, what this gun does, it does three very cool things, and we'll get into those in just a moment. But first, I want to tell you guys about the item card itself. For the damage, you got 1,981 on this one, 77% uh, accuracy, 66% handling, reload of 3.1 seconds, fire rate 10.01 shots per second, mag size of 45. The red text says a little from column A, a little from column B. And that is just in reference to the special ability of this gun, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. In addition, you get some crit damage bonus, you get some weapon shield capacity, you get weapon fire rate, you get some melee damage because this thing's bladed. And uh, yeah, I also got a really good anointment on mine. I got the 100% damage as bonus cryo damage while my Sentinel is active. And with my Zane, my Sentinel is always active. So let's jump in and show you how this gun works. So what this gun does, uh, of course, we would have some buddy systems. Uh, if you hit headshots your shots will ricochet around to other enemies and i uh, don't have any enemies that are close enough to really show you but that's what it does uh, let's take out these buddy systems real quick because they they just complicate me showing off anything obviously uh, there's one down there's the other one okay so now we can ricochet these shots around as you can see we wiped that guy out we took this guy's shield almost completely out so you can see this is doing some crazy good damage. Now, you might have seen the other effect this thing has. If you hit body shots, this thing applies sticky bombs to enemies. And watch as these things go off and do all that damage. Uh, this thing is a lot of fun. The third feature of this gun. I know it says a little from column A and a little from column B. But they should also include a little from column C. Because this gun also allows you to skip the burst fire delay just like the Nighthawken did. So even though this is a burst fire weapon, you can skip it just by squeezing the trigger over and over. And uh, that's exactly what made the Nighthawk and so beloved early on in the game was the fact that you could just keep on squeezing that trigger and just destroy everything in sight. And this gun is no different. If you hit crits, you get rewarded with the ricochets. You get the high crit damage. If you hit body shots, you get rewarded because it applies stickies, which will do a massive amount of damage to enemies. Uh, this gun is a lot of fun. 
I highly recommend getting this on Zane, Amara, Flack, even Moe's because with Moe's you can just hit body shots for days and if you're doing any kind of splash build on Moe's you're going to do massive amounts of damage and splash damage with her so a lot of fun with that as well. So let's show you guys how to get this gun. You're going to need, again, you're going to need a third DLC for Borderlands 3 called Bounty of Blood, a Fistful Redemption, or as I like to call it, Boba 4 for short. You're going to want to head to the Obsidian Forest. And from the Obsidian Forest, you're going to want to head to the middle most fast travel station right here. It's going to be called Crone's Contentment. So once you get there, you're going to follow the path that I'm going to show you. And this is going to make this farm very quick and easy. So first thing you do is you head up the ramp right as soon as you travel. You can go ahead and grab ammo while you're there too. From there, it's just a matter of following the path that I'm showing you here. You're going to need to go up and around this ledge. And once you get through here, this is the, I would say this is probably the most confusing part of this map is that you have to go through this little shack to get to the next area, which just seems strange, but there you have it. All right, so once you go through the shack, you're going to go around this corner. And once you get up here, there is a little drop down valley and a beautiful waterfall and everything. And hidden behind the waterfall over there is a tiny little cave. And that's where you're going to fight the Hydragonian. And I hope that I'm saying their name right. If I'm not, I apologize. It's not like I'm trying to get it wrong on purpose. But before you do that, head over here. There is a fast travel station right around the corner. And this is going to put you a little bit closer to this farm. As you can see, you're going to be right here and you're just going to run over there versus starting from here every time now you can start from there every time because there is the uh the ammo machine if you need ammo each time then that could be useful for you to do that as well but from right here it's just a matter of turning and going through that waterfall and going through the little tiny cave and fighting the hydragonian so just jump up here go through here and there is a nice little jump pad and this brings you into this nice crystal cave where there's a bunch of enemies and I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my Monarch just to wipe him out real quick. All right, and as you can see, there's our first copied Hydragonian. And if you were in the market for some Iridium, if you need Iridium for anything at all in this game, this is a crazy good Iridium farm. Every time one of these Hydragonians get copied, you are going to be able to get a lot of Iridium out of them. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's, let's do a little test here. Let's see. So right now I have 51,742 Iridium. Yeah, I've been kind of sitting on some Iridium stockpile here. Uh, but we're going to kill all these dudes and then we're going to see how much we have after that. All right, so we had 51,742. And now we're going to pick up all the Iridium. As you can see, there is a ton of Iridium. And we got over 100 Iridium just from killing those dudes. Very nice. That was about 200 actually. And as you can see, they actually dropped the proprietary license on the first run. So there you have it. Uh, just like all the other named enemies in this DLC, they tend to drop their drop very, very frequently. Now you can get the uh, proprietary license from other named enemies in the various DLCs, but they are definitely the best all around source for it. So if you're trying to get this gun, come here and this is the location once more, just in case you missed that previously. It's like the cave that almost looks like it has ears or something. I don't know. Uh, but right there is my starting point. You run over and you go through there. So that's it. That's my guide to the proprietary license. Again, uh, hitting crits will ricochet your shots around, hit other enemies. Great for mobbing. Hitting body shots will do sticky bombs on enemies, which does lots of damage and Unlike regular burst fire guns, where this is your burst, with this one, you can just spam the trigger and just keep shooting, and it's gonna output lots of damage. And as you can see, it gets more accurate the longer you hold the, or the longer you, you tap the trigger in this case. So, as you can see, right now I'm not even adjusting my aim at all, it's just laser accurate, and that's how Hyperion weapons do, man. Once you uh, start shooting for a while, they start getting laser focused. And this time we're taking another look at one of the other legendaries from the Bounty of Blood. This time it is the Light Show. Now, minus the Nuclear Ruthless Light Show, your prefix will vary depending on the parts that this gun spawns with. As you can see, the damage on mine is 9,520 times 4, accuracy 90%, handling 60%, reload time 3.1 seconds, fire rate 7.5 shots per second, max size of 28. The red text says, give me some light away. This is a quote from Hamlet. And this gun is very, very strong. Now, I had previously recorded this video before the DLC came out. And then Gearbox had buffed a lot of stuff in this game. And uh, this is one that got a really big buff. So my original review was that it was pretty good, but not exceptional. 
and then they made it exceptional on me. So, uh, <laughs> as you can see, in the hands of any Vault Hunter, it doesn't have to be Flak, but in the hands of any Vault Hunter, this gun can absolutely shred, dude. Uh, I've heard people compare this, including Lazy Data. I've heard people compare this to the Double Anarchy from Borderlands 1. If you guys ever played Borderlands 1, the Double Anarchy was a uh, SMG that was just absolutely amazing. Uh, you could just hip fire it all the time and shred everything in sight. And uh, it was a really fun weapon that most uh, Vault Hunters in Borderlands 1 benefited from pretty substantially as well. So yeah, uh, I would say that's a pretty good comparison, honestly. Uh, I'm doing a pretty horrible flak build here, so don't worry about that. I don't really know how to play flak. I'm working on it, okay? I'm working on it. So let's take it over to Trot and show you what it's capable of against the big boss. So I'll see you when we get there. All right, so here we are versus Captain Trot. We're just going to get behind him and hit his crit spot real good here. With flak, obviously, you don't always have to do that if you're rocking Megavore. But as you can see, this thing is pretty ridiculous. We almost one-clipped him there. Uh, probably would have if I was... Uh, actually, I, I didn't even change my class mod, so if I changed my class mod and uh, adjusted my build a little bit, I'm sure we would have one clipped him there. So as you can see, this gun is exceptional, uh, very good in the hands of every single Vault Hunter, great on Zane, Amara, Moe's, and Flax, so make sure you pick this up. So to do that, let me show you guys where to go to. So to get the light show, you want to head to Gehenna, and you're going to want to go to Obsidian Forest. Now you are going to want to spawn at the middlemost area of this map, the fast travel called Crone's Contentment. From there, it's just going to be a hop, skip, and a jump over to the enemy that drops it, so I'll see you when we get there. All right, so from Crone's Contentment, fast travel station, you can go up the ramp here and grab ammo if you need to do that but what we want to do is we want to head over to this cave right here and we're going to fight the lazodactyl so it is really straightforward the route to get there so i will run over there and we'll see you when we get there so to get into lazodactyl's arena you just need to go through this little tiny cave you'll see the blood and the dead body outside of the arena and then Lazodactyl will spawn right over here on the cliff. Now, you do want to make sure that you kill the Lazodactyl over top of solid ground. You do not want to kill him when he's flying over the edge over there. So let him come in to you. As you see, we did not get it on the first run, which is okay. He sometimes will drop two, as a matter of fact. But we'll go ahead and save and quit and come back over here and try again. All right, run number two. And he dropped a bunch of stuff. And some of it fell off the map. So again, you got to watch out for that. We got a beacon baby maker and down there yep that's it right there that is the light show but let's kill him again so you can actually get the drop on the ground and see it for yourselves that's like i told you don't kill him near the cliff i should take my own vice all right run number four and he drops stuff up here of course <laughs> If you drop stuff up here, you have another option since you can't actually mantle up there. You can jump and go into photo mode. And as you can see, there is the light show. When you come out of photo mode, immediately hit your pick up item button. And that way you can grab it off the ledge. Just in case that ever happens to you. All right, so let's see. Which one do we end up getting there? We got the negating groovy light show. As you can see, compared to the other one I got, since this one is ice or cryo rather, uh, the damage is a little bit lower than it is with radiation, but I did get a higher mag size and while airborne critical damage increased by 60%. So it could be pretty good if you like to jump around a lot. So that is the farm pretty quick and easy to get this gun. Like I said, uh, not a real complicated farm. It only took four runs. Actually, it took less than that since technically the drop fell off the cliff on one of those runs which was my bad again, you know, don't kill them near the cliff cause your stuff will fall off. And this time we're taking a look at the legendary chandelier and also apparently my spade shotgun and my class mod again. I love when this happens. Anyhow, the chandelier is a legendary manufactured by Malawan so it can spawn in any of the elements. It can never be non-elemental. Mine is abundant spooling chandelier. Yours will be different depending on the parts that you roll with. Um, mine also has, uh, 4,105 damage times four accuracy is 65% handling is 48% reload time, 2.3 seconds. Fire rate is 1.7 shots per second. Mag size of 16. The red text says it will not last the night, which is in reference to a poem, um, which is about burning your candle at both ends, which I guess is what factors into the whole name of the chandelier. Um, this one does consume four ammo per shot. And interesting to note about this gun is it will ricochet off of surfaces. You can bounce this gun off of walls, you can bounce it off of ceilings, you can bounce it off of floors. 
But what's interesting about this gun is it doesn't seem to matter what you bounce it off of. We'll get into that here in a second. First of all, let me show you guys where to farm this thing. So you can start by hitting the fast travel station in the middle of the Obsidian Forest map, the one that is by Crone's Contentment. Uh, hit your ammo machines and then follow this path and you're going to go all the way to the very end of the map right here where the boss fight is located. Um, you might be able to shortcut from the original spawn point and get up this ledge. I have not been able to, to jump up that myself, but maybe you can try that. I don't know. But ultimately, this is the route that I know to take. So I will see you when we get over there. We'll start the farm. Tell you what, before we start the farm, let's go ahead and test this thing out on some enemies. we got a bunch of mobs here. Uh, we'll shoot them directly. We'll hit uh, some shots off the ground. We'll see what we can get to happen here. This is direct shots right here, obviously. Now, this is shock on flesh, which isn't ideal. Uh, we'll try some ricochet shots, and it doesn't seem like the ricochet does any extra damage from what I've seen. Uh, we'll switch to corrosive and take out a buddy system. You can see it took three shots uh, for a buddy system to go out. Um, it doesn't appear that this gun does great damage. Don't know, man. I don't, I don't know what the what the real purpose of this gun is or what it's what it really does. It doesn't seem to do much, uh, whether you're ricocheting or hitting directly. All right, so here we are at Bellic Primus, who is the boss that can drop the chandelier. And we're going to try and keep some cover here so that Bellic can't hit us. And also so that... When we're using the root, it doesn't hit us either because the root is notorious for killing you with your own shots when you're playing as Amara. So let's see what we got here. Did we get one on the first run? We got a Firestorm and we got a Dowsing Rod. So nope, not what we're after. Let's save and quit and try again. So here's where you need to go. This is where you'll trigger your save point. So again, starting from the middle thing, you got to go all the way around to the very end of the map right here. And then you're going to hit a little jump pad right here, which launches you into the arena right here where you fight Bellic Promise. So I will be back once we get the drop and I'll see you then. Run number six. And we got one finally. Holy crap. That took a lot longer than I expected because most of the things in this DLC seem to drop things really often. Let's try this thing out on Amara because I'll be honest, I had only ever tried it on uh, Moe's and Flack and was pretty disappointed in it on both of those characters. Let's head to a map that we're very familiar with, Athenus. And I'll see you when we get there. Okay, so here we are at Athenus and we're using the, uh, the shock element, but we're on Amara, so I'm going to be able to apply other elements as well. So in the hands of Amara, even even with Amara, this thing still just doesn't feel that great. We're going to try and do some ricochet shots and see if that does better. I'm not optimistic, to be honest with you guys. Um, now, nah, this thing just feels very underwhelming, in my opinion. Let's see if we can ricochet some shots and hit this guy. Eh, still, still not really worth, uh, worth the weapon slot, in my opinion. So that, you know, that's... That's how it goes with some weapons. Not every weapon can be absolute amazing pieces of kit. And uh, this one is definitely just not that good in my opinion. So let me know down in the comment section below. Uh, have you tried this gun? What do you think of it? Have you found a way to make it not suck? Now, obviously with Amara, sometimes I can just hit such powerful damage with ties that bind and my action skill being now uh, adapted to Mayhem 10 that it doesn't even matter that a weapon's not any good it'll still just destroy everything in sight so you got to keep that in mind when you see amara wrecking things but this is how it normally goes right here with the chandelier so i don't know let me know in the comment section below have you tried this thing have you made it work i would love to hear what you guys have done to try and make this thing somehow viable pouncing the block now mine is pouncing that is the prefix Yours will be different depending on what parts you get. Uh, the damage on this one is 6,576, accuracy 84%, handling 89%, reload time 1.9 seconds, and fire rate is 9.01 shots per second. Mag size is 12. The red text says, this machine unerringly arrives at the truth. And the name, the Blanc, and the red text are both references to Knives Out, which is a really, really good movie. You guys should absolutely check that out. Uh, additional stats on this are 10% critical hit damage, 48% weapon accuracy. Uh, the anointment that I got on this one is action skill active weapon damage is increased by 200%. That anointment is really good on Zane and Amara if you're going to do a phase grasp. 
Uh, it's not great at all on Moe's because the only time your action skill is active is when you're inside of Iron Bear. So not really ideal on that. Uh, the special ability of this gun is that it damaged, uh, damaging enemies grants 35% weapon damage for a short time when switching between firing modes and that stacks 10 times. And we'll show you exactly what that's talking about here in just a moment. First, let's show you how to farm this thing. So starting from the fast travel station right here, all you got to do is just go around this pathway and right here is where Ipswich Dunn is going to be located. So again, you start here and you go around to here and that's all you got to do. There is a fast travel station here, but for some reason on uh, on this map, sometimes it disappears. But trust me, it's here because there it is. All right, so let's go on over and fight Ipswich Dunn and see if we can get him to do the drop real quick. Uh, on our way over, uh, I'll show you guys this gun. So as you can see, if I damage this person and then I switch firing modes, we're going to get more damage out of this gun if I can hit my shots, that is. There you go. All right, so 70,000, 37,000. Now we'll swap modes and you're seeing hundreds of thousands. So as you can tell, uh, this does work as it describes. Also, I love the fact that I got my gangster style aim. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love that I could do my gangster aim with this one uh, because of the parts that it rolled with. Not every one of them is going to give you that awesome sideways aim, by the way. It depends completely on the parts. Uh, so let's go ahead and wipe him out so we get this drop. And we did not get it on the first run, so we will uh, come back and try again. In the meantime, here's that uh, weapon in action again. As you see, it's really good, man. You got to remember to swap your weapon mode in order to get your maximum damage out of it. Uh, this thing will be best in the hands of Moe's, I would say, because what you would want to do is uh, you would stack it up and then swap. And then with Moe's, if you're running bottomless mags, you basically keep that damage going for like forever. So could be quite powerful so let's save quit we'll keep farming until we get this drop all right run number two and we got one we got the arctic the blanc and this one has melee damage for the annoyment not really what i would want on that <laughs> but that's what we got anyhow so again this gun is pretty interesting man like again i think this would be best served in the hands of moe's using a bottomless mags build uh it could be fun on all the other vault hunters though you do have to remember to swap modes uh, otherwise, you're not going to get the uh, the maximum damage out of this gun. This time, we're looking at the Mother 2. This one is a Turbo Rad Mother 2, and that just means it's going to be radiation damage. Uh, your prefix will vary depending on the parts that you respawns with. The base damage on mine is 1,848, 69% accuracy, 58% handling, reload time of 1.6 seconds, fire rate 3.34, shots per second, and mag size of 22. The red text says, thank you for taking the time to read this flavor text. This flavor text loves you. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's just in reference to like mothers and how, you know, sometimes we're not as attentive to our mothers as we need to be. And sometimes mothers love it when you actually uh, pay attention to something that they write to you. I don't know. Uh, otherwise, I don't think that red text has anything to do with anything in pop culture. Now, the mother too is an interesting gun because what happens is when you shoot this thing and you throw reload it, it sends out these little drones. And these little drones will scurry across the ground until it comes across an enemy and then it kind of just latches onto them and does DOT. Uh, you can send out multiple of these at a time. There's five, there's six. And it looks like you can get about six out before they start exploding the first ones. Uh, now, if you can reload faster, maybe you can get out a few more. Um, the annoyment that I got on mine is after using phase slam, weapon damage is increased by 300% for a short time. And we're going to phase slam and see if we can get any kind of damage out of these guns or out of these uh, drones. Because honestly, when I've been using this thing, I have not seen much in the way of damage from the drones or the gun itself. It seems to be massively underperforming. Um, I don't know. I could be completely wrong on that, obviously. Uh, I do love that the, the drones track people down. And then, like I said, they stick to them and they do this DOT on them. Uh, but even with that, it's just it's not that much damage. And I don't know, man, it, it just feels kind of weak, especially compared to some of the other uh, DLC guns that we've had that have been really amazing. Uh, this one just doesn't feel all that good. Why did, did that dude just jump all the way up there? Holy crap, that's kind of impressive in a way. 
Uh, but yeah, the Mother 2, I just don't get it, man. Maybe there's something about this gun that I'm missing. The uh, the DOT, if you're rocking some sort of build that is heavy on uh, doing DOT, then sure, maybe you can get some crazy damage out of this. But me personally, I'm not getting much out of it at all. <laughs> I don't know, man. We should be getting 300% damage uh, right now after doing that phase slam. And uh, you see, it's just kind of underwhelming <laughs> at, at best. Because, I mean, I could switch to, like, you know, this and we just melt them down. But with the Mother 2, it just feels like I'm doing nothing to these guys. So, I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below. Have you guys used this thing? Has it worked better for you than it's working better for me? I've tried this thing on Moe's. I've tried it on Flak. I've tried it on Zane. Uh, I thought that I would get the best results out of Amara, but I don't know, man. So let me show you guys how to farm this gun real quick, just in case you want to go get it and try it for yourself. So what you want to do is head to Gehenna. You're going to head to the Blast Plains, and you're going to head over to this part of the map right here. Now, the uh, closest fast travel station is right here, the Blast Plains Pump and Charge. So we're going to travel there and then I'll show you the route from that point. All right, from this location, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go around this corner, take a hard left, and you're going to head to this area where there's like a uh, fort kind of thing here. But you're going to head up onto this cliff and I'm going to show you once we get over there. Now, the normal route to get up there would be to take the teleporter right here and that's going to teleport you up there. But I want to show you a faster way because when you save and quit, you want to spawn at this station. This is going to be the closest spot for you because this will take you from here up this cliff and into the zone. Whereas previously, you'd have to start from here, grab a vehicle, then drive over there. So once you start from this spot, though, all you have to do is head toward these cliffs right here. And we're going to bypass having to use that teleporter completely by doing just a smidge of parkour. First thing you do is you jump up on this ledge and then you jump over to this ledge and ta-da, you are up there. You no longer need to use the teleporter and uh, you go through this little cave back here and inside you're going to meet the boss that drops this thing. And his name is Slithermaw. Now Slithermaw is pretty easy. If you got a fire elemental weapon, wail on him real quick and uh, no luck on the first run. So we'll try, try again. Run number three. Let's see if we have better luck here on run number three. We got a rerouter, an unforgiven. And there it is, the Turbo Mother 2. Next two mags will have 100% bonus radiation damage. Uh, no element on this one. So obviously this thing can spawn in any of the elements, but it can also spawn non-elemental as well. And it being a T-Dior, you got to throw it to get the, uh, the bonus effect out of it. Like I said earlier, though, I just don't feel like this thing is really worth using when there's so many better options, especially with what came out just in this DLC alone. And again, to farm it, hit the save point right here on the map, climb the mountain over here and come in here to take them on. It's a pretty quick and easy farm. It only took me a few runs to get that one. But uh, again, I really don't think that it's worth it. Uh, you can get a variety of other things from this boss as well. This one is the dousing rod. Now, the one that I got is an engulfing vicious dousing rod. Your prefix may vary. This gun looks really cool. As you can see, nice little texture on that gun. It shares the same texture as the Bazumi, which is a purple rarity gun. But uh, I actually like this a lot. I think it looks really good on the gun. Now, uh, the damage on this one is 1,393 times 2. This thing can roll in a non times 2 variant. Both of these are non times 2 variants. They both they all have basically the about the same damage uh but obviously the times two you're gonna get a lot more damage out of it they all have the same mag size of 75 it'll appear uh this one also has 52 percent accuracy 58 percent handling reload of 3.8 seconds fire rate 13.34 shots per second mag size of 75 the red text says it's down there somewhere let me take another look which is a reference to the big lebowski Primarily the scene where he's uh, getting his head shoved into the toilet and they're interrogating him. It's down there somewhere. Let me take another look. Oh. It's a pretty hilarious movie. I love that movie. Uh, this one also features a negative 20% weapon damage, which is already factored in on the damage up top. So don't panic and think that it's going to take damage away from you. Uh, this one also has a plus 21% weapon fire rate. It does consume two ammo per shot for this variant. Uh, I believe that the times the the non times two, yeah, these only consume one ammo per shot for what that's worth. Now, so on Moe's, go for the times two on the other characters. Maybe just stick with the times one uh, because of ammo consumption. But it's an assault rifle; you're gonna have plenty of ammo to play with. 
So, uh, dowsing rod itself is actually another reference. That is a uh, type of uh, rod that people use when they're trying to find water. So, as you can see, in the hands of Moe's, this thing is pretty damn good. What makes this thing really cool, though, is the underbarrel is a grenade launcher. And that grenade launcher destroys things. And on Moe's, you can keep the grenade launcher going for quite some time because of her ammo regen. As you saw right there, we hit a million damage on that shot. This thing is just a lot of fun. There was another million damage on that shot. Uh, we can take out a buddy system without really, with my aim. You know, that must have been pretty powerful because I can't aim for nothing. You guys know that by now. Uh, <laughs> so this thing is a lot of fun. It's another really good weapon on Moe's. And again, the grenade launcher part is what really makes this good. Uh, the regular rifle part, not bad. I mean, it is a good substitute. For a Monarch, it's nowhere near the power of a Monarch, but in the hands of Moe's, it, it'll feel like a Monarch because of the amount of damage it's going to output uh, as quick as it does. Um, now, I am using a Splash Heavy build, and my build should be released either today or it might already even be out by this point. Uh, but I'm calling it my SeaWorld Moe's build, so make sure you look out for that. This uh, build is going to carry you with all these new weapons and allow you to do all kinds of crazy, cool, fun stuff, so make sure you check it out. Um, this gun is not a lot of fun in the hands of other Vault Hunters. Uh, if you're not playing as Moe's, you're not going to really enjoy this gun as much. Um, and that puts it kind of in the same uh, category as the Unkempt Herald and uh, a few of the other, like the Miscreant, things like that, um, which are new guns in this DLC that I've already covered. Now, that said, it is still good in the hands of the other Vault Hunters, but they have better options, generally speaking. And as you can see, just the regular uh, weapon damage on this gun is not really anything to write home about. But when you switch to the grenade, that's where you really do some damage. So this gun is a lot of fun on Moe's, like I said. So let's go ahead and get into where you need to go to farm this thing. The Dowsing Rod is a legendary that is dropped from Terra Domini. That's a tough one to say, man. Terra Domini on the blast plains map so let's head over to blast plains and i'll show you how to get this thing real quick so you want to head to gehenna the new map for the new dlc you want to head to the blast plains and terra domini is going to be located right here on this map so what you got to do to get there is you want to travel to this save station that's right here in the middle of the map and then you're going to kind of basically go around this way go through this area and you're going to have to go up through here and there's a teleporter right here that allows you to teleport over to here so we're going to head to this point on the map, and uh, I'll see you when we get there. All right, so after running through the map, you will reach this point right here, and there is a save station conveniently located right here on your map, which allows you to more quickly farm this thing. Now, you do need to have the teleporter unlocked before you can do this farm. If you don't have the teleporter unlocked, just continue in the story until you unlock that. And as you can see right here, Terra Domini will spawn in. Now, Terra Domini is weak to fire, so I'm going to let him come toward me, and I'm going to use my underleveled, my level 57 Monarch. So just wear him out with that. And let's see if we get lucky and get it on the first run. Oh, it went right off the map. <laughs> oh, man. Um, That is not anyhow. That is a mother, too. We'll cover that at a later date. All right, so let's uh, save and quit. Try again until we get them the drop, and I'll see you guys when we get it. So in case I didn't make it obvious last time, it's probably a good idea to kill him over solid ground so that if he does drop it, he doesn't drop it off the map. And as you can see, we got one right here. This one is a engulfing vicious dousing rod with 300 over 90 for the anointment, which uh, on an assault rifle is not really optimal. Uh, we also got a unkempt herald. So like I was telling you guys in the unkempt herald video, you can get these from other named enemies early on in the game as well. Uh, because this is possibly, I think this is the second map you get to in this DLC. So as you can see, pretty nice little get right there. But yep, that's the dowsing rod. So in the hands of Zane, let's take a look and see what kind of damage it's capable of. As you can see, it's not horrible. Like I was telling you, it is, it's a capable weapon. Uh, but it is just so much better in the hands of Moe's than it is in any of the other Vault Hunter's hands that it's really hard to justify the uh, the weapon slot on the other Vault Hunters. But that said, it can do pretty good work, especially if you uh, have better aim than I do. So yeah, that is the Dowsing Rod. Again, highly recommended for you Moe's characters out there. All you guys that are rocking Moe's, this is your time to shine, dude. The Flipper. Now, the one that I got the compressing flipper, your prefix might change, but... This gun is a beast. 
Think of the Sandhawk from Borderlands 2 with a B-Shield built into it. It's that kind of damage. So let's go ahead and I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. So uh, obviously we're on Moe's. We can go out here and do some Iron Bear stuff. They buffed Iron Bear, thankfully, and uh, it's a little bit better now. But we're going to show you what this gun does instead. So as you see, this thing pops out projectiles like crazy and they do create they don't care this thing this is a fire variation run true vault under mode mayhem 10 it's tearing through dude shields it's tearing through their flesh it's doing whatever it wants it just doesn't care it's like it's like the honey badger of smgs man it just doesn't give a fudge sickle so this gun you do have to, like I said, you do have to have DLC 3, which is called Bounty of Blood, A Fistful of Redemption. It was released today, June 25th, 2020. If you're watching this video when I first put it out, that is. Uh, it can drop from various random sources in DLC, but it has a much higher chance to drop from Minotaur, who is located on the map Blood Sun Canyon. Now, I'm going to take you over there and show you how to farm this thing in just a moment. I, I do want to show you all the kind of crazy damage you can do with this thing. Damn, this is a fun gun. This is a fun gun. Think of the Sandhawk sniper rifle before the, the nerf on that, dude. This is that kind of damage. This actually might be more damage now that I think about it. And as you can see, you're getting a lot of projectiles out of this thing. Look at these projectiles. They're beautiful and they kill everything in sight. So let's go show you guys how to farm this thing real quick. All right, so there are two different starting points from where you can get this gun. Obviously, when you first come into the map, if you go around this way and dip into this little valley, there's the Minasaur. That's where he's located. Conversely, you can go slightly past that and trigger a save point right here, which will put you slightly closer. Now, if you start from this part every time, you can grab ammo, uh, but I'll show you both spots real quick so you guys know how to farm this quick and easy. So when you first run around here, there's just this little dip in the wall right there. You would go through there, but I'm gonna show you guys where that uh, save station's at in case you wanna start from there. So you can see right here, this is moderately closer. This is the location where that's at. As you can see, that's closer than this by a magnitude of about 0.3. <laughs> that's, <laughs> I went to public school, don't worry about it. All right, so when you come around through here, you are going to see Minotaur pop up up here on the ledge. Now, Minotaur is, uh, or Minasaur, I'm sorry, I called him Minotaur, I'm a genius. Uh, Minasaur can be uh, killed immediately on the ledge, but if you do that, bear in mind his loot's going to drop up there. If that happens to you, I have a way that you can get it. So jump there, jump there, there you go, you saw it. I was on the thing, and then you can jump over to there. I've had to do it a couple times. And would you know it, we got one on the first try. This one is the Stark Flipper. Uh, I already have one in my inventory and you saw me using one of my mows there a minute ago. So this one is the compressing flipper, base damage 2,614, accuracy 69%, handling 58%, reload time 2.6, fire rate is 5.67 shots per second, mag size is nice at 34. The one that I've got here is in fire and corrosive. It can be in any element because it's Malawan. It cannot roll non-elemental. The red text says, put one foot in front of the other, which is a reference to the 1970 stop motion movie called Santa Claus is Coming to Town. I have no idea why that is the red text on this gun uh, because Flipper is a movie about a dolphin and this is very clearly a oceanic looking theme on this gun. So I'm not really sure how the red text works with that. But uh, I do know that this gun absolutely destroys. And this anointment that I've got is the one that you should definitely be on the lookout for. Consecutive hits, especially on Moe's, if you can rock the um, basically bottomless mags kind of Moe's, you can just destroy everything all the time, everywhere, always. And it is just great here. I'm going to grab this one and we'll, uh, we'll kill this dude real quick. It doesn't matter what element you use. It just tears through everything. So keep that in mind. Uh, it is just an absolutely amazing gun and it's great on every vault hunter. Uh, if you're doing it on flak, I would still say consecutive hits anointment's great, but you can also do on action skill in next to mags anointment. If you want to do that, uh, that works just as well, if not better on flak. This time we're taking a look at the legendary beacon and this is a Malawan pistol. And, uh, as a Malawan pistol, it basically looks like a staple gun. <laughs> if you've ever used a staple gun before, I don't know why they have to look so silly. I would love it if they would actually just remove this, uh, like front shiny piece here and just make it look like an actual pistol, but whatever, it's fine. 
it's very distinct and you know what it is when you see it on the ground anyhow the damage on this one is very high at 16,412 accuracy 82 percent handling 76 percent reload time 1.6 seconds fire rate is 9.46 shots per second mag size of 20 the red tech says this little light of mine i'm not going to sing the song if you guys don't know that song by now look up this little light of mine on youtube and have some fun uh, this one also features 15% fire rate, 36% weapon charge speed, 60% splash damage radius, and it is anointed to give me 300% increased weapon damage against enemies above 90% health, which used to be a really good uh, anointment, but, you know, with recent uh, change to how that anointment works, it's not the best option anymore, especially not on a pistol. Much better on a, um, a sniper or a rocket launcher, in my opinion. So this is what the beacon does when you reload it whatever element you have equipped at the time so as you can see we've got corrosive and we have radiation so if i shoot it and then reload it now i get a radiation uh nova if i switch to corrosive and then reload oops and then reload it then i get a corrosive nova the nova itself is not really the um the feature that i want to focus on here though the feature i want to focus on is the base damage of this gun this gun much like the hell shock i know a lot of you guys know how good the hell shock is uh, the uh, beacon, much like the Hellshock, is extremely powerful. Uh, this is a situation where you normally wouldn't use the beacon versus flying enemies. Uh, but yeah, this gun is extremely strong. And let's take it over here. We're going to use Corrosive versus Flesh for the Minasar. And just to kind of show you that this gun just doesn't really care what the enemy's status is. Look at that. It just melts him down real quick. So real easy to farm weapon as well. This uh, gun, like a lot of the other ones in this DLC, are really quick and easy to farm. This is an extremely powerful pistol. If you're in the market for a good pistol, this thing is exceptional. Now, uh, one thing that you should note is that even though this is a uh, elemental Malawan weapon, it does only consume one ammo per shot, as you can see there. So not too bad. All right, so to get this gun, what you want to do is you want to go to the Blood Sun Canyon map. And instead of going all the way to the middlemost point, which I know would make sense because this is the guy you want to farm. He's just right here. But if you go to this one and then you take the elevator up, that elevator is slow as hell. So you're actually going to start right at the beginning of the Blood Sun Canyon map and you're actually going to run across. And it is going to be faster in the grand scheme of things, especially if you're running like Amara or Zane where you have some good speed boosts. If you're on uh, Flack or Moe's, I'd, I'm still going to go ahead and say that this way is probably going to be quicker overall, but I'll let you be the judge of that. You could equip a Snowdrift artifact and make yourself go a little bit faster if you want to do that. Could help out considerably with this, but yeah. Ultimately, you're just going to want to follow the path all the way across to the middle point before you would get to the elevator, and you're going to go right here on the map. So I will see you guys when we get over there. When you get to this point of the map right here, you're going to have a save station available to you right here. From there, you just need to go into this little room over here, and that's where you're going to find Jarek Logan. Now, Jarek Logan has a much higher chance to drop the beacon than anybody else in this DLC. Let's see if we get it on the first run, as a matter of fact. Wouldn't that be great? That would be so great. <laughs> We've had that happen for a few of these videos now. Uh, it doesn't happen as often as I would like, but the drop rates on all of these enemies are exceptionally high. I don't know if you guys have noticed that or not. Uh, nothing on the first run, so we'll save and quit and try again. There are a lot of enemies in his arena, so be prepared for that. All right, run number two. Let's see if we have any luck here. Run number two, and we got it. Nice. Second run, we got a manipulating beacon. Even higher damage than the last one I had. This one has incendiary damage on it. So all these guys are going to be super weak to that. Um, and then, of course, somebody jumps into my face to ruin the moment for me. <laughs> But as you can see, this gun is extremely powerful, and it doesn't care if something has an armor bar, doesn't care if something has a shield bar. Uh, it doesn't seem to care what element you're having to deal with. It just does work. It's a very, very good pistol. I uh, highly recommend this thing. Uh, this is one of the best all-around weapons in this DLC. Unkempt Herald. That is right. The Unkempt Herald is back, and it is an interesting weapon, to say the least. Now, this is a returning legendary from Borderlands 2. A lot of you probably remember the uh, Borderlands 2 variant because it was widely considered one of the best guns in the game. 
Now, in order to get this on Borderlands 3, you will need the third DLC called Bounty of Blood, A Fistful of Redemption, uh, or as I like to call it, Boba 4 for short. I don't know why. Uh, but anyhow, once you have that DLC, you're going to want to get to the map called Blood Sun Canyon. That is uh, this one right here, Blood Sun Canyon. And you're going to go all the way, almost to the very end of the map, and you're going to head to this point of the map right here. You will need to have the teleport option unlocked in the game. So uh, if you don't have the teleport option unlocked, then you're not going to be able to get over here to get this thing. Uh, now, the pathway to get there is a little tricky. That's why I'm showing you this entire route instead of just taking you right to the point where I'm farming it. Because I want you guys to be able to see, number one, I wanted you to be able to see the kind of damage you can do with the Unkempt Herald. Uh, even in the hands of Amara, who this isn't really the most ideal choice on, it can still wreck face in Borderlands 3. So you need to take that little jump pad there. You're going to head over to this little contraption. You jump up here and then you just wait for the thing to come. And then you're going to take it. This is the exact same thing you have to do during the story of this thing. Uh, no spoilers here because I know it's day number one of this content being out. And I'm not trying to spoil anything for anybody uh, other than by telling you where to find this weapon. All right. So when you get through here, you're going to take this little doorway. And when you go through here, there is going to be this little tiny spot uh back here in the corner around here zoom and you punch your way through and you take the teleporter this will activate this save station right here on your map and from there it's just a matter of jumping over this rail and down here will be caber dowd now caber dowd is the person who can drop this you can however get the unkempt herald from a lot of the different named enemies in this dlc i'm pretty sure you can also get it from chests in the dlc but i'm not 100 percent positive on that so as you can see this is not the most ideal option on amara uh, as a matter of fact i also don't have this active which i need to have active but that was on me so this gives me fire on my shots as well which is a good way to go here um but in the hands of Moe's, this thing is lethal as hell. And as you can see, we got one on the first run right here. So there you go, packing, gratifying, unkempt herald. Now I wanna show you something real quick here. I'm gonna drop my Monarch so you can see this. Um, so the one that I was using is a times four variant, and the one that we just now picked up is a times three. Now the times three one right here, as you can see, it has higher base damage on this particular one, but you're gonna get more damage overall with the times four. You want to be at a moderately close range when you're using this gun because uh, what happens is when you shoot this gun, as you can see, it spreads out into multiple pellets. So the further away something is, the less likely you are to hit all those pellets on it. So ideally, you want to be about this range for most enemies so that you're hitting all those pellets on them. And uh, obviously, hitting crits does even more damage. And the reason this thing is so good in the hands of Moe's is because she does so much splash damage that uh, it makes it such a powerful weapon. So again, this is the location where you find it at. Again, you have to go to this spot, hit the teleporter, and that brings you over here. It activates the save point. You jump over the ledge, you kill Caber Dowd. Now let's swap over to Moe's, and I'm going to show you what, can, what kind of damage you can actually do with the Unkempt Herald. So as you saw, Caber Dowd drops the Unkempt Herald fairly often. I would estimate that most of the named enemies in this DLC seem to have a 30 to 50% chance to drop their legendary items. And like I said, you can get those legendary items from other named sources in this DLC. You do not have to go all the way to Caber Dowd. You can get the Unkempt Herald fairly early in the DLC, as a matter of fact, from any of the other named enemies. So just be on the lookout for the named enemies. Uh, make sure you, you kill them and, and check their loot because you might be surprised and end up getting an Unkempt Herald right at the beginning of the DLC if you're lucky. Uh, me, on the other hand, it wasn't until I got to like the third map in before I finally saw my first one. So just keep that in mind. Um, now, on this particular one that I got on my Moe's, it has 200% splash damage for a short time after action skill ends. So when I hop out of my mech, I just go to town. This is a Mayhem 10 boss, Killavolt in Lecture City, and we just destroyed him with a pistol. So that's the kind of power that you got uh, with this gun. And let's just check our loot here real quick. You got to check your loot. You just never know, man. Oh, we got an infinity. Great. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the Unkempt Herald, man. Let's take a look at some of the stats real quick so you guys know what you're getting into. Uh, so, like I showed you a minute ago, you can get a times four variant. You can get a times three variant. The times four takes four ammo per shot. 
The base damage on this one that I'm using is 6,811 times 4. 59% accuracy, 51% handling. Reload time is 2.5 seconds. Fire rate, 2.31 shots per second. It's a mag size of 16. So since it takes four ammo per shot, I'm going to get four shots off on this thing, except I'm playing as Moe's and I have the ability to regen ammo. So I get a lot more than four shots at a time out of this thing. This thing does have plus 122 splash damage radius. And again, the anointment on this particular one that I got is on action skill and splash damage increased by 200% for a short time. This thing is a beast. The red text says I wasn't counting either. The name Unkempt Herald and the red text is in reference to a 19, I believe it's a late 1970s movie, Dirty Harry, starring Clint Eastwood, where he plays basically a dirty cop. And uh, Unkempt Herald is a play on that title, Dirty Harry, Unkempt Herald, if you get the reference there. Uh, and the red text is a reference to that movie where he uh, has a guy at gunpoint and uh, he asks the guy if he's feeling lucky because the guy doesn't know if he ran out of ammo or not. You got to watch the movie to get it. Anyhow. This gun is pretty damn good on Moe's, like I said, not the best option out there for Amara, Flack, and Zane, but if you are a Moe's main, this, this is one of the first, like, really, really, really good weapons that you're going to get out of this new DLC. This one is the Gargoyle, now mine is the more Gargoyle, your prefix will vary depending on the parts that you're spawns with, but the base stats on the one that I've got here are 7,631 damage, accuracy 78%, handling 58%, repair time, which is also known as reload time, basically, is 3 seconds, fire rate 8.95 shots per second shots to break aka shots before you have to reload is 42 the red text says defender of the night that red text plus the name of the gun is a reference to disney's gargoyles now the uh, book that the gargoyles tv show was based on was called defenders of the night so a nice little easter egg there this thing also features 21 percent critical hit damage 175 percent weapon damage it does consume two ammo per shot and it has 60 percent melee damage because as you can see there's a little blade thing on there the thing to note about this gun is it can spawn with a times two variant a times two variant will give you more damage overall it will consume an extra ammo per shot as well now the version that i got is on action skill and splash damage is increased by 200 percent for a short time and that is a literally perfect roll for Moe's to be honest with you so what we're going to do is I'm going to take it in here we're going to show you real quick what this thing does and then see if you think that it's worth having so the gargoyle is uh, dropped by a guy named Dickon Goyle in the DLC and I'm going to show you exactly how to farm that here in just a moment but first I wanted to show you the kind of damage you can output with this thing it's pretty silly let's be honest that was really that was really good um so yeah is it good yeah yeah, it's very good. It's very, very, very good. And oh, look, we got a EMP5. Nice. Uh, I don't really want it, but all right, cool. All right, so let's take you over to the map where you can get this thing, and I'll show you how to get it. So on the map, Gehenna, you're going to want to head to Blood Sun Canyon, and you're going to want to go to the second fast travel station, the one that's halfway through the map. And the reason you want to go to that one and not the one at the beginning is if you go to the one at the beginning, obviously you have to run all the way through the map and nobody wants to do that. All right, so by spawning at this location, you just need to run around and go into this area right here. And this is where Dickon Goyle will spawn. So I will see you when we get over there. All right, now when you are on your way over here, you will literally pass this save point right here, which is located at this spot on your map. From here, it is just a hard right turn and then head straight over into Dickon Goyle's uh, arena. So when you guys get over to Dickon Goyle, remember he is a flying enemy and he is weak to fire. So bring something that's, uh, you know, really strong with fire so you can take him out real quick. And we're going to grab him with Amara and just wear him out with the flipper real quick. Did we get it on the first run? We sure did. We got the Morgar Goyle. This one action skill and weapon damage. Uh, status effect damage is increased by 75%. Not really the role that we'd be after, but there you guys have it. That was uh, the very first run, as a matter of fact. So... Uh, he does seem to drop this really, really often. It is not really a hard thing to farm. So this gun is actually really good on all Vault Hunters, and it gives you a good option with uh, corrosive damage. It will always be corrosive, by the way. It cannot spawn in any other element. It's always going to be corrosive. So this gives you a good corrosive pistol option. Great for enemies that have, you know, really big armor bars. You can just spam into it for a considerable amount of time before you have to reload. And, uh, you know, obviously look for one that has uh, the best repair time possible. I'm pretty sure 
that it's almost always going to be right around the three second mark for that reload. But, you know, if you can find one that's even faster, then by all means, go for that. The Miscreant. And apparently also we're taking a look at an unkempt herald in the background into my class mod. Oh, I love when that happens. Anyhow, the version that I got is the Annexed Vicious Miscreant. Your prefix may vary. Annexed means it is going to be a times two, and that is absolutely 1,000% what you want to look for on this gun. The times two variant does not cost any extra ammo on this gun. So if you can find Annex, get it. <laughs> so the stats on this one are 5,282 times two for the damage. The accuracy is 67%, handling 58%, reload time 2.5 seconds. The fire rate is 11.18 shots per second, and the mag size is 20. Now the red text on this is one of my favorite red texts in the entire game to this point. It says, why waste time shoot lot gun when few gun do trick? If you don't know, this is a reference to The Office, which is one of my favorite TV shows of all time. There is a character on that show named Kevin, and in one of the episodes, Kevin says that his mechanic doesn't speak very good English. But when he when he talks to his mechanic and he uses just very specific small words, his mechanic and him have a wonderful conversation. So in that entire episode, he's just walking around speaking in like broken sentences, and people think that he's having a heart attack. So it's it's a pretty hilarious episode. Now this gun on the other hand is only hilarious if you're the one shooting it because these enemies are not gonna have a good time. As you can see, this thing is capable of putting out some insane damage, especially on Moe's. That said, it will do work on all the Vault Hunters, but it is most notorious for Moe's because like I was talking about in previous item guides, Moe's can do that splash damage. Uh, but what this gun does is it shoots out rockets. I don't know if you're seeing them or not. Let's shoot a few here. And there you go. You can see them right there. It shoots out these little rockets. Now these do not count as bullet damage. So if you're using a sapper class mod, for example, on Moe's, you're not going to get healed off these, but uh, it has massive amounts of splash damage, as you can see. Now, the cool thing about this gun is it has an alternate firing mode, and I was hoping to get behind something so I could switch the modes and show you, but they're not letting me play that game. So let's take out his buddy system, and we're going to switch to double barrel. Every single one of these will roll with double barrel. Let's go ahead and get some infinite ammo by hopping in and out of our mech. And I will just spam this double barrel into people. And oh my god, it's just ridiculous. Honestly, it's just ridiculous. It is such a powerful weapon in Moses' hands. If you are a Moe's main, this gun is a must-have for you. It's a literal must-have. If you don't get this on Moe's, you are doing yourself a disservice. I don't oh, I was like, I don't know where this person's at. Found them, and they're dead. This gun is just lethal. And it doesn't matter who you're fighting. I can take this over and kill freaking bosses. We can do anything we want with it. I just wanted to show you quick and easy. But now let's show you how to get this gun real quick. So to get this gun, you're going to want to go to the halfway mark of the Blood Sun Canyon uh, map. And this is the presentation room. So when you teleport to that spot, you're still going to have a little bit of distance you're going to need to cover. But going that far, at least, will save you from having to travel halfway through the map. It makes this so much easier to farm. Basically, you're just going to follow the path that I'm showing you here. It's pretty straightforward. You're going to go all the way to the final boss on this map. You're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, because when you play through this uh, DLC, you have to fight this boss. You have no choice. So you just hit this jump pad here. And you'll notice that this is the exact same route that we took for the Unkempt Herald farm. If you guys watched my video on that, if you didn't, there should be a link to that down below. I missed my, missed my uh, travel there. I missed my transport. So we gotta wait for the next one. All right, so we'll take this one. The Miscreant is a lot of fun. And again, like I said, it's exceptional on Moe's. I don't know that I would use it on a regular basis on the other Vault Hunters because of the ammo consumption involved in the gun. But on Moe's, with a bottomless mags and you're doing splash damage, you can really, really go to town on some enemies there. Um, so as you can see, we, you can literally run past every single enemy in this map to get to this farm. So once you get here, you're at the end of the map, and I'm going to uh, go in here and kill the boss real quick. This Monarch is a level 57 Monarch, by the way. Uh, it just doesn't care. <laughs> it just doesn't care that it's not level 60 and this guy's level 62. It's a five level under leveled monarch essentially. And we just obliterated dude with that. Uh, tell you what, let's go ahead and use the root here so you guys can see this thing in, in its crazy glory. And the hands of Amara, I'm probably going to kill myself with this. Oh God, let's get behind cover. Yep. Oh, oh. 
We survived. Okay, amazing. All right, so we got the Miscreant. Now, this one is an annexed one, which is good. This one does have the while sliding prefix, which is horrible. <laughs> I do not want to go sliding around with this thing, but if you can get an annex prefix, it probably doesn't matter what the anointment is because, like I said, you're going to get uh, two shots out of this thing. Now, if you get the annex version, it costs two ammo per shot. If you get the non-annex non -annex version, it costs one ammo per shot. But the cool thing is, whether you are in pistol mode or double barrel mode, it costs two ammo per shot either way. So keep that in mind, because with double barrel mode, you're going to get a lot more bang for your buck, generally speaking. Uh, this gun is absolutely amazing. It's a lot of fun. Again, if you're not on Moe's, you will eat up your ammo pretty quick with this thing. As you can see, this thing will tear through the ammo. But if you're rocking a cut purse, then you're probably just not going to care and you're just going to run with it anyhow. So to get this one again, like I said, you just come in here and kill this dude. He is located right here on the map. It's at the very end. When you save and quit, you're going to spawn right here by these vending machines so you can grab ammo. You can sell off uh, junk gear to build up your, uh, your money. And if you want to, after you kill him, there is also a, a rare chest out here that you can go and grab just in case you want a little bit of extra loot every once in a while you'll get something good out of here and you can get the new dlc legendaries out of this as well and as you can see by the mini map we've popped a legendary here we got a wagon wheel not exactly what we wanted we also got a loot expanding deathless so always make sure you check that chest if you want a little extra shot at some loot and as you can see he drops a fair bit of loot in here as well including some of the other uh dlc items like the beacon there the gargoyle we'll cover those in a future video and this one is called the bloom now there is never going to be a prefix on this gun it will not spawn with any elements it's just always going to be bloom just so you guys know it will always spawn with a blade on it it will not change parts at all the only thing that will ever be different on this gun from mine to yours will be the anointment that yours rolls with now to get this gun you're going to need to kill the final boss of the dlc but before we get into that and I, because i don't want to spoil anything and give you guys a chance to get out of here i want to show you guys what this gun's capable of uh in the hands of flak this thing has potential uh in the hands of the other vault hunters i think there's much better options i would honestly rather use a maggie uh than to use this on most of the other vault hunters now what this gun does and i don't know if you saw it a second ago um but it, number one it makes a really interesting sound when you shoot it let's see if you can hear this you hear how it sounds very odd like that uh, but what it does is if you hold down the trigger and let it charge up, you will fire out almost all of your shots. And the very first shot from that series of shots will be amplified damage. It'll be increased damage. So that first shot will do a lot of damage. Every shot after that is the normal damage of the gun. I do think that this gun would be much better if by charging it, every single one of your shots got that increased damage. But... Uh, I guess maybe that might be a little too powerful. Oh, I'm not really sure. Uh, it works on body shots. It works on crits. Uh, that said, again, I don't feel that this gun is that strong. So let's see. Let's hit a crit here. As you can see, that was 251k. Now we'll hold down the thing. Uh, well, crap. <laughs> Flak is just so uh, squishy for me. I uh, couldn't really see there since I was in fight for my life. Yeah, 270k um yeah as you can see it's just not that much damage i you know for something you get from the final boss in the dlc i expect a lot more damage out of this thing personally uh that's not to say that this thing might not get buffed but in its current state it's just not really worth the uh not worth the item slot in my opinion so let's go ahead and show you guys how to get this thing and again spoilers if you haven't beat this dlc I'm not trying to ruin anything for you guys, so this is your chance to, to dip out if you don't want to hear about this final boss. There we go. Let's go. So to get this, you're going to go to Gehenna. You're going to go to Crater's Edge, which is the final map in this DLC. You're going to hit the fast travel station, and then you got to run across the map over to the house in the middle of the map. Uh, from there, there's going to be a save station where you can basically uh, farm for this thing over and over. So let's run over there, and I will show you once we get to that spot. All right, so once you get to this spot of the map right here, there is a couple of vending machines, and there is a save station right here. From there, every single time, you can save, quit, and start from there. To fight this boss, you're going to jump in this jump pad and head over into the arena. So this is the Ruiner. He's the final boss of this DLC. I'm using a five-level under-level Monarch, in case you're wondering if the Monarch 
uh, is still good. Yes. Yes, it is. Thank you for asking. Uh, what you want to do to kill this guy is you want to shoot the crystals on his back. Now, once you've done a certain amount of damage to him, he will often try to run away. You can kill him before he gets out of this area if you do enough damage. If I had a level 60 version of this gun, I would probably be all right, but I don't. So uh, we'll see. Maybe I can still get the kill. Need to hit this crystal over here. He's going to try and start walking away here in a second. And we're going to get him. Uh, maybe not. All right. So what he's going to do is he's going to go underground when he does that. Uh, you can follow him by going in through one of these teleporters and then you'll see him up here and then you can do damage to him in this phase. But as you can see, we've already got him dead. Uh, what's going to happen though, is you're sinking down into this slime. So if you stay in here too long, it's going to start hitting you. So you need to go back out here. You can actually just wait out here the whole time. There is no, uh, consequence to waiting outside of the cave in case you're wondering about that. And there you go. As you can see, we got him killed. He drops this at a very, very high rate, uh, almost 100% of the time. But of course, now that I say that, I didn't get one on this run. Uh, we did, however, get this really nice 300 over 90 complex root. So I'll take that over the bloom. You can also drop a lot of the, uh, the cosmetics uh, from this DLC as well. So be on the lookout for that. So not exactly the world's toughest boss. Again, if you've got a uh, fire um, monarch, you're going to do crazy damage on this guy. So you know, utilize that. Uh, there is also a treasure chest after you beat him. It's over here, uh, which is located by the fast travel station. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop this thing and nothing from that either. That is my guide to the bloom. Again, I do not think that it's a very good gun. Base damage on the gun is all right. The uh, special effect on the gun is it leaves a little to be desired in my opinion that said maybe with the right build and gear you can make it do some pretty good damage but if flat can't make it do some crazy good damage i'm not sure what you're going to do different i hope these item guides were helpful to you if they were then please consider dropping a like on this video and subscribing for more borderlands 3 content thank you guys for watching take care